What's going on guys? This is Web Dev Journey and welcome back to a brand new porcupine piñata filled with circus peanuts. Today we're going to be talking about uh, third party components, meaning that we could install components and use them. So we're going to do one right now and it's called React Model. Uh, this is just going to be a model that shows up when you click. It's going to show up a model and that's it. That's basically all it is. But this is a... You're going to run into like, you're going to want to start using React components that other people built. And this is just one of them. You know, you got React forms and so much more React buttons. It's just absurd amount of stuff that you could add into. But right now we're going to just focus on React model, which is a third party component. We have to download it, yarn, add. So let's do that right now. Let me just copy this. Copy. Paste. Let's run that. We should have it right here. All right. So we're going to be using this model every time someone hits the uh, what should I do? And it'll spit out an option. Right now, what we have is just an alert, but we want a modal to pop out. Have I been saying modal or model? Modal. Yeah, modal to be popping out instead of the alert. So that's what we're going to be focused on. focusing on. You might be wondering, well, where would we add this component? Well, like I said in the last video, we do add separate components to everything else. So in components, we're going to add a separate file for this one component. Let's just create one right now, new file. And we're going to actually call it the um, option model or modal. Sorry. Oh, oh God. Option modal js and this is where we're going to start adding our the modal component right here so first of all we do need to import react react from react Oof. okay and also we're going to have to import something from the package we just installed from react modal now you might be wondering well what are we importing from that uh, package that we just downloaded. So the great place to actually find those things is inside the doc. Now, most docs don't really have, uh, tell you, not most of them, but some of them might not even have this right here. Like this is telling us import model from React model, which we're going to use, but some of them might not uh, tell you this at all, but it might have some something in here that will give you a clue to where to actually look or where to actually look like code pen. You have to. Like you could go to GoPen and actually see what's going on there. But just to let you know, start with the docs first. If you don't see the import, just look around and see what's going on. Because most of them, not most of them, some of them might not have it. So we're going to import modal from React Modal. Let's just copy that, paste it right there. All right. Now with this, we're going to actually create a stateless component. Because we don't need to have a state for this React Modal. We're just passing data and the modal is supposed to... Uh, just give out this data and that's it. We're not we're not going to be doing nothing with or creating new data or manipulating data inside of here. So let's actually just do a state list, state list component. So const, I'm going to call mine option modal. We're going to set that to an arrow function. And we're just going to return a div for right now that we're going to have a uh, something in here just like that all right so now let's go back to our main application which is in bucket list app we're going to import it right here so import option modal from option modal just like that and we're going to call it down here option modal control save and we should see a refresh over here on this side and we're getting an error let's see what's going on inspect I didn't know what was going on over here in option modal. We forgot to export it. So export default option 
modal just like that control save and now you should see it over here and something in here does show up awesome so now we have this component running but we haven't even used the uh, modal yet the component modal yet now for some components in for for some third com oh actually all of them i'm pretty sure all components third-party components are going to require some things to be passed in just like just like in our bucket list application we pass in some props in action and options you know so that way options knows what to do and action knows what to do well the same thing with the modal component the modal component needs some props to actually function well and well it only needs two props to actually function so let's actually do that right here let's get rid of this we're going to call in modal and yes you could have it like this as you if you want with the closing tag instead of self closing you could have it like this and add some stuff in here as well but right now we're going to add in the two props that we actually need to pass in to modal like i said you can go into i just closed it didn't i you could go into that uh docs and figure out what the uh props you need to be passing in it does tell you everything there but for now the first one is it's called is open, which is we're going to set it equal to a Boolean. So I'm going to say true for now. And the next one is called content label, which is something that uh, for mobile use. So we're going to just call it, uh, I'm going to just say selected option. Select dead option, control save. Now we save it you see a modal pops up here without any text. We could add some text. Like I said, this, we're going to treat this modal as a regular H, HTML tag, and we're going to add some something in here. So we're going to add an H3, and we're going to say um, option that was selected. Control save, and there it is. Option that was selected. <laughs> okay, so... As you can see over here, we can't close this modal just yet. We can't, even though I click outside, I can't really close it. Every time I refresh, you're gonna always see that modal. Well, we don't want that. So in order to get rid of that, we have to set this to false. Control save, and there you go, the modal goes away. But doing this obviously isn't dynamic. We have to hard code true or false, which we're not going to do whatsoever. We want the application to do it itself dynamically. So in bucket list step, we need to do something. We need to add a state. All right. So in here, we're going to add a state called selected. If selected, I'm going to say if selected and we're going to set this or we're going to say is selected is selected. And we're going to set that to undefined because at the very beginning of the application, they're not going to have a selection already randomly appear. We want them to click that button so that way they have that option, right? So down, now that we have this set up, is selected to undefined, we're going to actually pass it down to option modal. And right here, we're going to say is selected is going to equal to this dot state dot is selected. Control save this. Now let's go to option modal and actually grab that so in here we do need to pass in props because we are passing in props and in here we're not going to do hard-coded uh false or truths we're going to actually do props dot is selected control save and we should have undefined right now for right now but the thing is once once this is called this is called is selected. Nothing really happens. Nothing happens because we haven't even set what happens when is selected is selected. You know what I'm talking about? When we actually do something here, we haven't even changed what happens. So what we need to do is actually go back into bucket list applications, which we already at. And instead of when we click on what we should do, what should I do? Instead of this alert, we want it to actually change the is selected state to true or give it the actual text. So let's actually go to handle pick or oh, here it is handle pick instead of the alert. Let's actually do something here. We're going to set this dot 
set state and you don't need to have the previous uh, state because we don't need it we're just updating something right so and we're gonna set it to selected option we're gonna choose not selected option is selected and we're gonna set that to the actual option that was selected control save now the reason why we want this is because we still want the text to be in there and this is going to get a little bit confusing. So right now is selected is going to be um, given the value of the option we actually select. So if we actually do what should we do and read more books comes out well, is selected is equal to a string called read more books. Okay. Now back into our option modal, we have this right here. Now this needs to be a true or false. It needs to be a Boolean. Now, right now, if they do select it, like I said, it's going to be a string, which is kind of uh, an iffy, right? But we want to make it an absolute Boolean. So we're going to do two exclamations, which this is going to turn it into an absolute Boolean or a Boolean. And I can explain that more better over here. So if I do console, if I do test, it's going to give me a string test. Now, if I do that again, but with two Booleans in the, in the, or two uh, exclamations in the, in the front, it's going to give me true. Okay. This is because it turns it into, if I do one, it's going to say, like I said, it's going to be false because we're saying that no string. So yeah, it's false. And then we do it again. It's true. It's just a little, uh, trick, but yeah, we're just leaving it like that. So that could be an absolute Boolean. All right. Now, if we actually save this, reload it. And then what should I do? Oh, nothing happens. Let's see why. Because we didn't put a return right here. So I'm actually going to put this in parentheses. Just like that. Oh, God. Just like that. Control save. Now, what should I do? We have our model opening just like this. Now, the thing is. Now we can't close out of it, right? We cannot close out of it no matter what we do. We got to fix that, okay? So the way I could fix it or the way I'm going to do it, you could do it numerous of ways, but the way I'm going to do it is actually add a button down here. Right here, we're going to add a button. We're going to say, okay, or got it. Okay, let, let's do it. I don't know, something like that. I don't know. But we're going to add this button and what this button needs to do once it's clicked is set the, the state is selected to undefined once again. Okay. So how are we going to actually do that? Well, we've already done it once before. I'm just going to save this. We've already done it once before guys. We actually did it right here when we set handle delete options and we set the state to an empty array. We just passed this method down to the parent or, or to the component and that component does the rest. So we're going to do the exact same thing. So down below right here, I'm going to say handle, uh, clear is selected. Okay. And we're going to literally do this dot set state equal I remember to add the parentheses or you could do right here return but I'm not going to do return I'm just going to add the parentheses right here and I'm going to set the um, is selected to undefined once again control save and now we get, we need to pass this method down to our component so right here is that you do it and I'm gonna make this in a new line paste oh no copy Paste it right here, and we're going to set this equal to this dot 
handle clear is selected control save this now we have access to that right here now what we're going to do in button is add that handle so props dot oops we got to do it in a uh, on click on click it's going to equal to props dot handle clear is selected control save now if we actually click on this what should I do we should have let's do it and we should it should go away which is pretty cool but now let's add the text of what is actually picked okay so down here selected and we're gonna add a p tag and we're going to do the and operator logic so that way we could see if actually an option was selected or not. So what we're going to do here is say props dot is selected is selected and if it's true then we're going to add a p tag that's going to have the props is selected. Now remember is selected is a string which is converted to a absolute boolean up here. Control copy, control save. Now what should I do? Red light district. Let's do it again. What should I do? Devil's Den. Read more books. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's what I wanted. So now there is one more uh, property or attribute that I want to add, and this is uh, this is called on request close. And this is actually going to take it in a function. Okay, now what this does is actually let us, if we click on the background, like right now, what should I do? If we click on the background, nothing happens, or if we click on the escape key, nothing happens. Well, on request close, this, this component already has that pre-built. So if we click on the background or the escape key, we could close it. And we just need to do that with on request close. And the function that's going to take in is literally the function that we just passed, which is props handle clear selected so that way it knows what exactly what to do so control save it's just a function you can actually do another function if you want but this function just takes in some event and what do you like the event of like closing and what do you want to do with that event that's it well if they click on the background or the escape key we want to handle clear is selected we just want to close the modal but you could do something else like open another modal or something 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 else you know so now, this is a try right now. What should I do? I'll click on the background and that goes away. What should I do? Let me click on the escape and that goes away. So it's a pretty cool thing to have, but let's actually revisit the React modal one more time, which is right here. Now, here's all the attributes you could actually have. Content label, styles, you could have different styles in here. On request scroll, that's the one we just looked at. Is open, on after open, there's just things that you could add in here see right here custom styles there you go just look at this look at this uh, docs and see what else you could do with this model but for now we're gonna just just do these three later on we are gonna style actually in the next video we're gonna actually set up webpack to work with SAS or less whatever you want like I always said but we're going to actually set it up to work with SAS. So in the next video, we're going to actually be styling some things. I'm not going to go overboard on the styling. It's going to be simple styling. You can style it however you want. I'm pretty sure you're good at CSS. But yes, we're going to be styling in the, in the next video. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something today. Well, I hope you learned something about third-party modules or components. And... Yeah, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.